You're about to buy a home, you realize that you're missing a bit of money to be able to make that proper down payment to avoid buying mortgage insurance. What do you do? Well, the home buyer's plan is a tool that may help you out in this situation. So in this video, we're gonna cover how the home buyer's plan may help you get that right amount of money necessary to make that initial down payment to be able to avoid mortgage insurance. How does it work? Well, the home buyer's plan has a few limitations. It means that you or your spouse, who you've been with our common law partner for more than 12 months, has to have not owned a home in the last four years. And then afterwards, if you meet that requirement, you can contribute or you can take out up to $35,000 of your RRSP without any penalty to be able to put some money towards your home. However, you, you could think, well, that's really cool. I'll get this money out and I won't need to put it back. Well, no, there's a caveat to it. You have to be able to reimburse that money back into your RSP within the next 15 years. And by doing so, you'll still owe income taxes when you eventually take that money out in the future. You don't get the advantage again when you redeposit it, but it's still very helpful. Let's see how it works. So the maximum amount that you can take out at the moment of shooting this video is 35,000. So imagine you're planning on buying or building a home next year and you, you're missing a bit of money to make that threshold payment to avoid paying insurance, or you just want to save int uh, uh, interest. So you decide, I don't have any money in my RSP. You contribute 35,000 into your RSP. Imagine that your marginal tax rate is 50% on that 35,000. Keep things simple. Well, that means that half of that money, you'll get it back in and your income tax return. So you get back 17,500, and then you get that money back in your income tax return. And the following year, you decide, I'm building a house or I'm buying a house. I wanna take out this 35,000 in uh, RRSP. Well, all of a sudden you have this 35,000 that you take out plus the 17,500 that you got access to because you put money into your RRSP. So all of a sudden that initial $35,000 that you had in your bank account now has become 52,500. So if you're buying a home of a certain value, let's say 250,000, and you want it to have 20%, with 35,000, you didn't have 20%, but with 52,000, you now have that required 20%. So it could be very useful to avoiding paying insurance because that mortgage insurance, even though it's good for the banks and it protects them, it's not really good for you. You're buying insurance where if you have a little bit more money, you might not have to buy that insurance and it doesn't really create that much value and it has a substantive cost. So if you could save that cost, it's good. And if you think about it as well, even if it wasn't for the mortgage insurance, that extra amount of money that you put down, well, you're saving interest on all, the, all of that money. So that's also quite interesting. But all in all, you have to make sure that you or your spouse didn't have your own home in the last four years. So let's say in 2020, you sell your house, you rent for four or five years. In 2026, you decide to buy a new house. You're eligible again, but you can't have owned in that period of time. And then uh, the other thing is you have to make sure that you contribute on time and then that you reimburse that RRSP out over time afterwards. So, Naturally speaking, from the RRSP video, it still makes sense once you've refunded our RRSP that you withdraw that 35,000 at retirement. But if ever you withdraw it before your income, your income tax rate went up a little bit, yes, it's gonna lead to a small loss, but you have to kind of compare that to how much you've gained by saving this insurance. So different calculations to look at, maybe your scenario is not that uh, good, but I know for my situation in the past, it was much more worthwhile to use this home buyer's plan to avoid this mortgage insurance and to save money there. And at the end of the day, that money is going towards my retirement, which is not a bad thing. So I hope you guys found this video interesting. I'll catch you guys soon. 
If you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing or joining my class where I guide you to apply and expand on the information found in these videos to real life examples. Have a good day.